will work in about 70% of the problems. This is the way by which you should be approaching the subject even if you are a bio student. Trigonometry is an important topic. It may not appear directly in your examination but it definitely appears in some form or the other. Koi bhi sapna saakar karne ke liye sabse zaruri hai sahi coach ka hona. Chuniye Sai Astra aur kare apne IAT and NEST ka sapna saakar. Download the app now. Very 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 warm welcome to all of you in our discussion of mathematics for upcoming NEST and IIT examinations. The pattern for NEST has changed this year. This year you have 20 questions worth 3 marks each. So in total you have 20 single correct option questions, right? Single correct questions, right? So out of 4 options, one option will be correct. You pick that option, you get 3 marks. If you make a mistake, you lose marks. And if you don't attempt, you get a big fat zero. So in total 60 marks for mathematics. Now this makes the paper easier than before. You don't have multiple correct questions. This makes the paper easier and makes the paper a little more scorable. And the basic reason for that is that when you have single correct questions, it simplifies your life by at least two folds. I'll just use the whiteboard and I'll show you why that is the case. That is the case because, see, I give you four options. First option is X is less than two. X is less than or equal to two. Second option is X is less than one. Third option is X is less than four. And fourth option is X is greater than two. Now in all these cases, do you realize if this is your answer, right? If this is your answer, automatically this and this will become correct as well, right? I mean, if X is less than one, automatically X is less than four and X will be less than two. So you know that this is not your answer. Similarly, if this is the answer, then you know that your X will automatically be less than four. So this cannot be the answer as well. So you're only left with two options. So this does not become a four option problem. It becomes a two option problem, right? You have only two options and you have to verify this or this. If you have somehow arrived at one option being correct, you know that this option is going to be the answer. There will be questions of the form where you will be given, say for example, you will be given, you know, x is, x belongs to 0, 2, right? Or x might belong to minus 2, 0. x might belong to, third option can be x belongs to 1, 3, right? Or x might belong to minus 2, 2, 4, something like this. Cool? So if these are the options, then do you realize that there is a very neat way of arriving at the answer? If you substitute 2 for x, you realize, and if it works, if 2 solves the problem, this cannot be your answer, this cannot be your answer, right? So now you are left with only two options. Then you simply substitute x equals to 0. Then you know which one of the, then you know whether this is the answer or this is the answer. If 2 does not work, then this is not your answer and this is not your answer. Obviously, right? Because if 2 does not work, then these are not your answers. If two does work, one of the two is your answer, right? One of three and four are your answers. So this does simplify your problem a lot and then you can simply use zero and you'll have your answer or you can use one and you'll have your answer. So that's the basic idea, right? So option substitution is something that becomes a very potent tool in single option correct questions, right? So in SCQs, this becomes a very potent tool. So before we move on to discuss the syllabus, we basically discuss the important tricks that you'll be able to use and simplify your problems by by two folds as I said the reason I'm saying two folds and not something like ten folds or five folds or six folds is because you know the examiners are not going to set a paper which is going to be so trivial that you know only option elimination option substitution will give you an answer you'll have to think a little bit you'll have to understand the concepts at least the very basics and the foundational aspects of mathematics and then you might be able to use these techniques and you might be able to come up with answers to many problems so option substitution is a technique which works in the following chapters first of all PNC PNC is a chapter where they'll give you n balls and they'll ask you to arrange in R ways and all of those things. So you can take a value for n, you can take a value for R, you can solve them for those particular values and you can verify which option satisfies the answer. So this is something which really, 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 really becomes simple if you know how to use option substitution and option elimination. Will this always work? No, but this will work in about 70% of the problems. Similar thing happens in probability because probability uses PNC a lot for matrices and determinants they might give you an equation they might ask you if there is a matrix which satisfies this and all of those things option substitution does help then you have sequences and series again they might give you a sequence and they might ask you to calculate the sum of n terms pick a value for n verify the answers then in trigonometry sometimes option substitution helps a lot because they might give you a very complicated identity and you might have to come and come up with the final answer option substitution might tell you which of them are not the answers and which one of them is the answer so trigonometry is something which can be simplified by many folds if you use option substitution and again calculus sometimes you know sometimes calculus might they might give you functions which involve theta as a variable you know so they might give you sine x plus theta or sine x plus alpha and they might ask you to differentiate it so if you take a value for alpha the problem might become very simple so calculus is one of those things which really really uses 
ऑप्शन सब्सिट्यूशन एज वेल दीज आर द फाइव मेन टॉपिक्स विच यूज ऑप्शन सब्सिट्यूशन फॉर योर बायो स्टूडेंट डू द बेसिक टॉपिक्स इन एनसीआर एंड देन ट्राई टू डू दीज टॉपिक्स थ्रू ऑप्शन एलिमिनेशन एंड ऑप्शन सब्सिट्यूशन एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर एबल टू कम अप विद आंसर यूजिंग ऑप्शन सब्सिट्यूशन इट्स वेल एंड गुड now another important technique is when you do integration there is a nice way of coming up with answers then that is by differentiating the options differentiation is much easier than integration in your examination you will have it only one problem right you will have only one problem from integration at best so it no it won't take that much time for you to differentiate all the four options and see which one of them fit the given function so sometimes you know sometimes you might when you differentiate you might get a different form you might get the different form for the integrand right you have to be very careful while verifying which one of them is the correct form of the integrand and you do that by substitution again right so for example if i give you a function which is of the form ln e to the power x square right and the integrand was x square so if these are the two forms then you you may not be able to see directly that they are equal but what you can do is you can take x to be say for example 0 and i might give you another option say x cube right you might not be able to come up with the answer straight away so what you might do is or you might have something like you uh, say i give you just a second i give you x plus two, something like this, right? You might not be able to relate them. So what you do is, so you take x to be zero, you substitute it over here, you get x equals to zero. At zero, you get this to be zero, and you get this to be two. Now put x equals to zero over here, you get ln, ha na? You get ln e power zero is e power zero, which is this is one, right? And when is what is the value for ln one? Ln one is equal to zero, so it has to be this option. right so you may not be able to show that they are equal you may not know that they are equal but you might be able to substitute a value over here for x and you might be able to substitute a value in place of x over here and you might be able to see that they are equal and this option and this option are not equal so this is again an important technique so make sure that you do all of these things you practice all of these techniques especially if you are a bio student it will become approachable for you right so learn this then there are certain necessary important formulas which you should be aware of right for example sum of n terms and some differentiation formulas some calculus formulas things like lagrange mean value theorem rolle's theorem pnc this will help you a lot in vectors this will help you a lot in coordinate geometry make sure that you know all those results all those formulas and practice a little bit with these and this is the way by which you should be approaching the subject even if you're a bio student if you're a bio student this step and this step should be sufficient as well you don't need to go to pyqs you should just do this and this and you'll be good to go if you're a mathematics student do all of this right you have one month you have to you have to practice a lot i request you to do all of this cool then there are some important concepts that will help you a lot in calculus they include l'hopital rule they include chain rule uh, logarithmic differentiation these are the three these are three very important concepts these are conceptual this is not for bio students okay this is not for bio students all the l'hopital rule is for bio students so even if you're a bio student do l'hopital rule l'hopital rule will help you a lot even if you're a bio student so right so even if you're a bio student do l'hopital rule but if you're a mathematics student you should definitely do these three things they'll help you a lot in calculus and they'll make your life far more easier than you expect them to now we go back and we see the topics that are important for your examination first of all you have sets and inequalities even if you are a bio student must do this is also for bio students right there are these chapters that i'll be mentioning with bio you have to do it if you are a bio student don't miss them out right so do sets and do inequalities especially wavy curve method then do relations and functions even if you are a bio student in this topic you need to learn how to come up with domains and range find domains and range of functions of relations of graphs different types of relations like uh, reflexive like transitive like symmetric like you know equivalence relations and all of those things to so do this practice this thoroughly be comfortable with this this will fetch you good number of marks right at least one marks you will like, at least one question you will get from these two topics right if you are a bio student you might find this topic a bit difficult but if you are able to do it go ahead and do this it's highly scoring and i said before you know option substitution option verification does help you out so if you are a bio student do the ncert part only and that should be good to go right for this do as much as you can for this at least ncert ncert is a must and you must do ncert it will help you a lot it will open doors of option verification for you and once you have that you'll be able to score many marks over here because it will involve probability and pnc so two questions are possible from here do this properly matrices and determinants not a very difficult topic very conceptual very formula based so do this even if you're a bio student if you're a bio student start out with ncert and these are the chapters which don't really require a lot of there are no prerequisites for these chapters right there are no prerequisites for these chapters this does not have any prerequisite this does not have any prerequisite 
prerequisites. This does not have prereqs again. Straight lines don't have prereqs again, right? So these are topics which are standalone topics, which don't have a lot of prereqs. You should be easily able to do them. And so I encourage you to try these topics out. Everything that has been written on this page, they are standalone topics. Now see, vectors in 3D geometry is a complicated topic, but done this in physics, right? Done this in physics, this becomes easier for you to do, right? So try to relate this from whatever you've done in physics and this topic becomes easier for you to approach and to understand and try to solve a few questions from this as well. Then come sequences and series. Even if you're a bio student, I request all of you to do all these topics even for bio students, right? These topics are important even for bio students. Only two topics might be very difficult for you. First one would be PNC and then the second one would be vectors and 3D geometry. But vectors you should be able to do because you do this in physics as well. Try to do PNC and probability properly. Even if you're a PCB student, do this. Focus a little bit on this. Hopefully, this will help you a lot. I'll, I'll also include coordinate geometry over here. Then comes the next unit. You can then go on to trigonometry. Now, trigonometry might be a hit and miss for you because you might do a lot of practice in trigonometry and it does require a lot of practice and there might not be a single question from trigonometry in your examination. So in that case, don't be disheartened because trigonometry does help you a lot in calculus and in these topics as well, right? So trigonometry will help you a lot over here and over here. So trigonometry before approaching these topics, you should be thorough with trigonometry. And so if you're done with the topics that I mentioned on the previous page, and trigonometry will also help you in vectors in 3D geometry. Also for functions and all, trigonometry will also be helpful because domain range and all of those things. Trigonometry is an important topic. It may not appear directly in your examination, but it definitely appears in some form or the other. At least three or four questions will involve trigonometric concepts. They may not be a pure trigonometry problem, but they will involve concepts of trigonometry in them, right? So before doing these topics, you must do trigonometry and inverse trigonometric functions. They're not very difficult. Do them, attend the lectures, understand these topics properly. Even for bio students, same idea, NCRE textbook. If you're a bio student, do these, topic for, these topics first of all, completely understand them and then just do textbook. Like first complete NCRT for these topics. Once you're done with NCRT for these topics, then go on to NCRT exemplar and then finally PYQs. Cool. So that should be the plan, right? That should be the plan. And once all of this is done, you'll be good to go. You, you'll be able to score at least, at least 40% in mathematics, even if you're a bio student. So make note, make a note of all of these things, do these things properly. And once you're done with hyperbola and all, you can also go ahead and do quadratic equations and complex numbers. So that's the idea. That's my plan for this. I hope you found some value over here and all the best for your exam. Feel free to contact us for any help that you need. We'll be very happy to help you out. Drop a like, share the video and see you soon.